Adam, uh, Adam Moore has led men's classes. He's led Sunday school classes. He's in a season now of raising children, so he's got a little break, but I'm going to get him back before long. But I want to read something from my son-in-law, uh, Adam Peterson. He wrote this this morning. He didn't even know what I was doing today. He said, God put you on my heart this morning. Ministry isn't a sprint. It's a marathon. And you have been running this race so faithfully. I know Father is so proud of you, and I just needed you to know that because of your faithfulness to God's call in your life. That my life is better because you called out in me God's best in me. Love you, Raj. That's family. My, my family has stuck with me through thick and thin. Thick and thin. More thick. I want to just get you to think about something for a minute. I'm going to ask Christy to come up and share something in a moment. We talk about the five love languages of marriage and relationships, but I want you to just think for a moment, individually, even if you're in this church for only a week or two, I want you to still think about this and take ownership of this church. The love languages to our church. Encouraging words. Do I speak positive, encouraging words to this body? This is the church. To one another, on social media, wherever you are, do you encourage, speak encouraging words. Number two, acts of service. Acts of service, always being available to serve one another. Not just the pastor or the staff or leadership, but serving one another. That's acts of service. Quality time, spending quality time with one another. How about our elderly? Do you spend time with our elderly? How about the fatherless? We have a lot of fatherless children in our church. How about spending time with them? Quality time, being around others in the body. Physical touch and closeness. Now, that has to be in a non-sexual way. But people need a holy hug. People need someone to hold their hand sometimes and walk them through difficult times. It's important. And then gift giving, giving gifts to one another. It's so important that we do that. B Listen, years ago on, uh, do you remember if you're over 40 or 50, you might remember this, but they had teachers appreciation day in elementary school and you took something for your teachers and cards. And man, I remember buying huge cards for my teachers and writing them. What happened to that? What happened to writing letters or cards to people. It's always a text now. It's an email. How about taking the time to buy a little card or write a little letter to someone and say, you mean the world to me. I see you in church. You teach me. You pray with me. Whatever it is, I see you picking up trash. Encourage people with a note. Amen? So just think of these questions for a minute. What makes our ministry easier? As a pastor, what makes my ministry easier? I want you to think about that for a minute. And I want you to write things down. I was going to go around with a mic, but we don't have time. I want to know what's going to make my ministry easier. I think we're going to come up with a lot of different answers. But I'm going to tell you one in my heart. Mature believers. That's what we have. In the previous ministry, immature believers are needy, needy, always needing something, always needing something. Mature believers are always giving, giving, giving. Not to say that we don't have needs at times, too. We do. But a mature church understands their gifts, and they use their gifts in the body of Christ for the glory of God, not for the pastor, 
for the glory of God. Why? Because we stand before the Lord and offer these back to him one day. We don't offer it to Roger Stark. I'm not trying to build a kingdom here. My kingdom's there. So we're in this together.